Hi everyone, I'm Luca and today I'll be breaking down the follow mouse example on the wikeditor.com learn page. Now before we start, let's take a look at the follow mouse example as it stands. When the example is running, you can see that we have a little character that'll follow our mouse around the screen. And you'll also notice that this character is animating by itself. So let's see how we make that work. Here I am starting on an empty canvas. I'm gonna bring in my image. Now you can bring in any image or you can draw your own character. Um, either of those should be fine. But here I've got an image of our Wick Editor mascot. And I'm gonna start by selecting this image and converting it into a clip. Now when we convert an object into a clip, we make it an interactive object. We make it an object that can actually have code. If I select that character, you'll notice that there's a little script window on the right hand side. We want a script that updates every single frame that this project is running. So I'm going to add a script and the script I'm gonna add is a timeline script called update. Makes sense. So if I select update, I'm gonna change this object's X and Y position by saying this dot X equals a new position. And the position we're gonna use is mouse X, just like that. Now, um, if you wanna see all the different types of positions you can change your object to, check out the input column. We have mouse X and mouse Y, mouse move X and move Y, there's all this fancy stuff. But for now, mouse X should be just sufficient. And watch what happens when we play our project. The character follows along on the X but it doesn't follow along on the Y yet, so let's add that in. I'm gonna select my character again, go to the update script, and I'm gonna add a second line that says this dot Y equals mouse Y. And if I play my project, the character follows along. Now, you might notice that this is looking way choppier than the interactive project on the example screen. That's because we're running at a really low FPS or frames per second. We can improve our frames per second by going over to the settings window, which is this little gear on the top right. If you click on that, you can change your FPS to a higher number. 30 is probably going to be fine for us, so I'm going to apply that. And if I play, look, it's much smoother now that I've increased the frames per second. All right, but now you also notice that this character is not animating. Uh, now, animating is an extra step, it's an optional step, but it's one that will make your uh, character look a lot more interesting. Um, so if you pause your project, the way we're going to animate this character is not by using the main project timeline, but rather using the timeline that belongs to this character itself. If you select the character and click on the Edit Timeline button, you'll notice we get transported into kind of this isolated view of just the character. Here, we can animate this character any way we want. So I'm gonna add a really simple animation. Instead of doing the hover animation, I'm actually gonna draw on top of our character. So I'm gonna give him a few eyebrows just like this. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy and paste this first frame over into frame position two and just change it slightly. And I'll do the same thing for position two to three and I'll change it slightly. And really, I'm just trying to make a, a little silly animation here. We've got some wiggly eyebrows. Those are a little too fast. Um, what I can do here is I can extend a few of these frames. So maybe we'll have the first frame will last three frames, second keyframe will last three frames, third frame will last three keyframes. All I'm doing here is I'm making these parts of the animation last a bit longer. So now we've got a little bit of a funny eyebrow animation. And if we go back to our main project, now you'll notice that the character is animated alongside being dragged. And those are the basics of the example project. Um, other things that you may not have noticed are uh, from the example is we use some text and some different background colors. But all in all, those that is how the example project actually works. All right, well, I hope that tutorial was helpful. If you have any suggestions for another tutorial or you want to see me create a tutorial of an example I haven't yet, feel free to reach out on our forum. 
on YouTube or over email to contact at wickeditor.com. If you want to support the Wick Editor while getting some pretty cool swag, head on over to patreon.com slash Wick Editor and we'll send you some stickers, a t-shirt, or put your name on the website depending on which tier you can support us with. Thanks so much for watching and we can't wait to see what you make.